Um, and so let's just, okay. So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. We have um, a special guest with us tonight and some, some students, a ninth grader and an eighth grader, uh, both from New Jersey. We'll meet them in a second and teachers from all over um, here and there and ed tech leaders at West Ed and so forth. So welcome, welcome everybody. Um, we, we are going to talk to, I told Alana this is not going to be an interview. Um, but we are going to talk to, have a conversation with Alana. If you don't know this yet, she is um, an author of a book that's there on the table, The Generative Age, um, also a um, podcaster. Um, Alana, I think it's fair to say it will be you of that podcast, close to being right. Yeah, that's so funny that you say that. Yeah, because I was thinking about that. Um, so it wasn't launched as a podcast one year ago. It started as a webinar. So technically, the one-year anniversary of the webinar was like this week. But I didn't okay. turn it into a podcast, I think, until March. So I don't know which anniversary to celebrate. So whatever you, can what do you guys celebrate all of them. That's, that's okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> so um, Alana Winnick is, um, and I'm going to try to get this right, it's a long title. You are the education Educational Technology Director and Data Protection Officer. That, I think I have that right. In yeah. uh, um, Bocantico, I think I did that correctly too. You did, you Close. got it. Yeah, okay. uh, School District in Sleepy Hollow, New York, which is up above New York City. And she is Marina's uh, good friend and colleague Marina's with us yeah. a lot. Um, so um, Marina talks about you a lot, Alana. And uh, we've been learning what you're thinking about the generative age. Um, one of the questions you ask, I'm going to ask you to ask it to us, if you don't okay. mind. No, uh, we I... can go around and introduce ourselves. You, you ask something like, um, what do you, what's one way you've used AI in your personal life and in your professional, professional. life? Is that close? So... I was going to ask you to ask it, but yeah, ask it again. That's yeah. what I and then, wanted to ask. And then we That's want to go question. around, have everybody briefly introduce themselves and, and just so we know who's here and what we can think about together. So what's it's the question again? Yeah. So it, you, why do you ask it before you ask it? <laughs> Sorry, I just made it harder. <laughs> because, well, I say what's one creative use it to save time, but I think... So I'll tell you a bit about the, um, the, the logo. So the, the infamous light bulb that you can see on the table and in the picture I made with AI. And the first chapter is called A Universe Unveiled. Um, and it, uh, it's supposed to be like, a, if you look closely at the light bulb, it's like a universe of like, a, it's like a vast and endless opportunities with AI. So it's like, just like a universe, like bursting with possibilities. And I think like Marina is a great example. I always pull her into everything. She's like my guinea pig. All of these tools can do such incredible things, but it's our imaginations and creativity that <laughs> come up with <laughs> all of the amazing things. Uh, um, um, I I yeah, somebody that. was jumping in, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, so that's why I like to hear what how everyone uses the tools creatively because I think it sparks ideas when you hear how someone else might use it. And you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Oh, like Marina, in our faculty meeting we just had, people were having like epiphany moments, like that light bulb moment, right? Like I never thought to use it for that. They use it for like report cards or to come up with a song about responsibility for pre-K or um, an email or whatever it might be. And I think when you hear how people are using it creatively, it starts to spark that light bulb moment for you. So that's why I, that's why I ask it. Why don't, we, why don't we just do the personal one and go around quickly? Is that okay? Yeah. So how have you used it personally in your life? Or how about you can choose whatever you'd like to do. And Sam? Uh, you you get to start us off. Just briefly introduce yourself so Alana knows who's here and what's going on. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, like like Paul said, I couldn't miss this session when I saw the title. Um, I'm Reed, aka Sam. I, I call myself a teacherpreneur. I work 
uh, here in Philadelphia at the U School. Um, and I combine uh, AI practices in the classroom as well as in my hustle. And I'm, I'm, I'm evolving day by day. Are you going to be at Educon? I am. Oh, I'll okay. see you there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, okay. yeah we, I, you, you got a table as well? Like a, what are they called? Conversations? No, no, no. Like a table for your, to hawk your book. No, I didn't know I could have that. Sam, Sam, you could get her one. I think you should. I have one, so you could go and come hang out with us. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks. That's great. Okay, Sam, Sam, one way you've used AI recently in your personal life. Uh, I mean, to to today, uh, I use it every day. <laughs> so today, um, just uh, a quick um framing of some some questions that I was having my having my students um, think about a, a situation but anyway Jackie Robinson's uh, statue was was vandalized and burnt and so I was helping like to frame a way of questioning that like was it was it was it racially motivated was it not racially motivated and so I just used AI to like generate some 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 thought provoking questions which I do typically on Wednesday, I, I call it like Ratchetemic Wednesday, where we, 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 we discuss, you know, interesting things that are going on in the world. Alana, feel free to be the, the host here as well. Um, <laughs> That's how you usually, jump in. I and I want to say that to everybody, you don't have to say muted, jump in, say what you want. I want to go around quickly, though, and yeah. say, Aditya, can you um, jump in or not? Camera issues, I see that, but can you speak? Yeah, there we go. We'll come back to you when you figure it out, which you probably will. Rohan. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. So, so how how do you introduce you... yourself briefly? And... Um, my name is Rohan, and I'm an eighth grader at a middle school. And how do you use AI? Um, I use AI to like um to like uh, uh to give me feedback on on how to improve my my essay writing That's amazing. oh i'm going to keep going um we'll come because we want to have time for everybody to come back in as many times as possible bob welcome you're muted hopefully on purpose uh hopefully yes, there you go. Uh, bob, yeah I'm, i work for west ed do a lot of professional learning for adults working in schools and around the education ecosystem. And I'm using chat GPT right now to try to become a better landscape designer in my yard. So I'm just trying to get ideas and feedback on plant selection, placement, and um, all that good stuff. That's a cool. fun news. Very creative. Janelle, welcome. Hi, everyone. Janelle Krishnan here. Um, I am uh, coming from Santa Ana, California, and I work um, I work kind of uh, at West End uh, with Bob, and I'm a senior program associate with the, uh, the literacy division. So I think a lot about teachers and students and writing and AI. And lately, I've been using chat GPT. This might sound silly, but I use it to help me uh, uh, figure out what I already know and, and go from there. We could we could go deeper on all these. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be staying in a house that has an air fryer, and I've never used an air fryer, and I love oatmeal. And so I popped into perplexity today. Um, what do you do with oatmeal and an air fryer? And I think you can actually make oatmeal in an air fryer. I don't know why you would, but anyway, that's how I used it this morning. <laughs> um, yes, introduce. Please. Um, Welcome. Hi, my name is Ashna. I'm a freshman, and last year I was in Miss Dead Bronski's class, so that's how I'm here. And um, I think I've been using AI to edit my emails lately because I've been cold emailing people a lot, and I want to appear like good, like first impressions. What's yeah. a cold? What's a cold email? As opposed to a normal email. Yeah, no, like cold emailing. Well, I think it's 
when you email like professors and stuff random people you find about like their work and stuff or like research opportunities just like, like a cold call person. like a cold call but a cold email yeah, yeah. You, you might not know them right is that part of yeah it? yeah uh -huh. cool cool interesting I'm, I and I want um, Amina to uh, I, Amina, sorry yeah, Amina, to also answer this. But um, when you went from eighth grade, where you were messing around in the spring with a lot of AI stuff on Now Comment and Youth Voices, um, how was it different, or what was do you use it in school now too, or any thoughts um, about that? No. Okay. But they like really don't like it when we use AI, especially since in high school, they're more specific with like plagiarism laws and stuff and how like using AI is like a cheating violation. So we don't do that much, but some of my teachers like encourage it a little, but we don't experiment like it like we did last year in the Sedronsky's class. Definitely not like that. Mm. Cool. Okay, Go so ahead. Yeah. Jump in. Yeah. Like Ashna, I'm a ninth grader and I was in Mr. Johnson's class last year. Um, so my response is kind of like to both of your questions. I feel like I have been using it this year. Like me and my friends have been playing around with kind of using it to grade our work to see like what kind of grade we might get or what kind of grade chat GPT would give us. So like, let's say we're like taking, we wrote an essay, we would put in the rubric that our teacher gave us and then we would put in our essay and try to like see the feedback that chat GPT gives us. And like usually it gives us a grade or two lower than our teacher would give us, but the feedback is like generally <laughs> good. So we can go into our essay and like refix those things after we put it into chat GPT. So like that's not really cheating or using chat GPT in that way because it's just the feedback that you're getting. So I think our teachers are fine with that, but that's another, that's a way I've been using it recently, which I actually wasn't doing last year. I have a question for you guys. So, a Marina knows what this is, what I what I call, but I call it a little bit call it the game of education when you're just trying to do exactly what the teacher wants you to do to get the A. Do you think that you're just using it to do exactly what your teacher wants you to do to get the A? Or do you think it's actually improving your learning, like focusing on the learn? I call it process over product. So like the product is the essay or the final end product versus the learning process is like you are learning and growing. So I think teachers need to assess the learning process and not assess the end product. Do you think that your learning process is enhanced or are you just trying to do whatever you need to do to get an A? You well, could be honest in here. Yeah. We're not going to judge you. A hundred percent. I think that it's more about like, definitely not about the learning process. Like I have documents that I've gotten this year well, for some context, we were discussing this in like our last meeting with Ms. Dedronsky, Amiya and I, and we were talking about how for our honors global class, some of our tests are like write essay writing. So to write the essay, they give us an extremely, extremely specific format like that they have to like instill in our heads and they make us like memorize it. It's like very clear, like intro, um, like intro consists of like the thesis, like hook thesis, hook bridge thesis. And then after that, it's like topic sentence. Five like paragraph all, essay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I, I just did a talk on this. It's like, I I may, I'm sort of mocked a graphic organizer. Because yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, exactly. It's like that too. an exact template that you have to follow when you write. And that really like annoys me. And I know it annoys Ashna too, but <laughs> I think I definitely agree with what both of you guys are saying. Like the education system, the teachers are not are more about the end product than the learning process. But I feel like using ChatGPT, I think you were also kind of um, hinting at this in your question. Using ChatGPT, definitely, I don't think it's more about the end product. I think it has to be the learning process as well. Um, because um, when we use ChatGPT, it gives us feedback. Yeah, it's like based on the rubric, but it's also based off of generally the writing and the content and. I think the feedback that it's generally given me with the essays that I put in kind of helps me overall improve my essays because it's more about the content than like the template because it doesn't really care, ChatGPT at least doesn't really care about like the intro hook, like all of those specific things. It's more about act, the actual writing in the essay. I, I mean, like, what I do you saw, think? Sorry, I just want to welcome Aditya. I, I think you, it looked like you fixed your stuff. So jump in whenever you'd like. Yeah. Do you want to 
introduce yourself and say one way you've <laughs> now he's gonna Jill or Miss Stadronsky better That's okay. here. Call me Jill. Yeah. Yeah. I know but your students are here so yeah. yeah they told me Jill too <laughs> okay oh good um so and Marina didn't get the answer either one way you've used AI this uh recently I, when you're ready but introduce yourself if you don't mind <laughs> and who's this to me or to one of the kids I'm a, uh, to you sorry oh hi i'm jill Staronsky. I, uh, I teach at william Ann and basking ridge eighth grade language arts teacher adjunct at drew university and uh one of the ways we're using ai this year compared to last year is we're actually really using the prompts in the thinking partners that Paul has created on now comment. And, um, I don't know if Rohan spoke already, but, uh, one Please of the, yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of okay. the biggest changes I've ever seen in my 17 years is that I've never been able to get the kids to truly, truly think deeply about the kind of feedback they want. And because a peer, you could ask a peer to look at my piece and look for this, which is also, you know, a high level thinking, but because they couldn't always provide that good feedback, a uh, higher level feedback, AI can do that. And that, that was then creating, you know, a, a way to think about your writing that I'm always asking them to try to, what are the enduring understandings that you understand about writing or you as a writer to think at that level and, uh, for me in 17 years, I've never been able to quite get that. It's something in the National Writing Project we do in a writing circle where the group really should get a memo. And I kind of gave up on the memo in the last few years because I couldn't get the kids to think about asking for their group for the specific feedback for, because so few groups were able to do it. And so, hey, oops, sorry. I was just going to say, Jill, what would what advice would you give to an ELA teacher, any type of ELA teacher, that most of them want to ban this. They've told me, um, I'm putting the computers away. We're going to hand write essays this year. We're not using technology or a computer because they're just going to cheat using AI. Like, what would be your piece of advice for that teacher? My number one piece of advice is you have to start, start with authentic pieces. Um, so you have to create an environment where students are writing for real purposes. If you do not create that, then students, I think, could or would want to cheat. Maybe Amelia would chime in on that or the kids. But I think if you have them writing for authentic reasons, for purpose, for, for a true audience, not for a grade, I think, honestly, I mean, it's there. it, it is such a tool. It's a, a thinking partner beside your writing not doing the writing. And I think Amiya and Ashna would probably say that too. Like, they yeah, they did. It, it did. We didn't want to toss our pieces. We wanted to write something and then have it as this person beside us, just like you would have a writing group. Can I, can I riff, can I riff off of, um, please, please sir. more riffing, please. Go yeah, for it. yeah. So no, actually this week, right. I had students, they were writing, um, we're doing these uh, breaking barrier essays based off of Jackie Robinson's values that he uh, exposed. It used to be a scholastic thing that they ran into a contest, but I continued doing it. <clears throat> and, but I, I have kids do peer reviews because I think it's important. Even if their review is sucks, I want them to <laughs> go through the process. And I call kids out when they give like sucky reviews, like, Oh, it's really good. Like that's not like you must don't like this person because you're just telling them it's good. <laughs> like you must really don't like them. But I have them do that because I think that's still important. But then that's when I'll put the AI beside them. Now, okay, now let's look at what ChatGPT. And then, like you say, they got that feedback from ChatGPT, and then it like elevated their their revisions because they got uh, they got um, you know more more specific de uh, you know more specific uh, feedback. But the, the area where I'm struggling it, are still my like my students that are struggling writers and readers um, to use AI with them. It's like it's it's still it's 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 a struggle. So hopefully um we could we could chop that up a little bit. Say more. I, yeah, I, I want to say something back idea. to Sam. 
You know, sure. I think, Sam, you're absolutely right. Like, I don't think you still ever replace your writing circles. There's a value to the human, the heart, and that you'd want that. So I never want to do one or the other. It's oh, yeah, yeah. and or both. And and Sam, I agree. It's It takes time to cultivate. My kids don't, I don't think just all of a sudden, oh my gosh, think, think, think. But, you know, to know what to ask of it, but as they play with it, I saw the thinking become elevated. And that was that was really truly exciting. And and Amiya and Ashna here probably played with it more last year than the rest of my students did, um, because they were involved with other things with me. So but I you know, back to you, Alana, like I, I I'm very excited about what I'm starting to say. Again, it's another piece that could be part of um our thing i don't think i never worry about it replacing our writing it's never going to it doesn't have a heart and you see that all the time it does not have a heart no wait i, th I don't think marina definitely didn't go and i don't yeah. know yeah, Bob did. I introduce don't... yourself marina and then get yeah, in who, the conversation marina, who are you walk. jump in <laughs> tell, tell everyone what you, have you shared what we've been what you've been doing um <laughs> I'm a little a little bit a little bit i yeah. like, a rock like, star to, like, drop a little bit of what we're up to with, um, well, so I'm Marina. First, good. Okay. I'm going to do the introduction. I, I'm Marina and I work with Alana at Pecanical Hills and we're located in, uh, in Westchester County in New York. Um, so like, I don't know, about like 45 minutes from Manhattan. And, um, I guess I've been using chat GPT and like Bing kind of experimenting with both of them personally, um, and creatively, well, and, you know, I think the thinking partners actually too, from now comment, because over the summer, when Paul and I were working with residents from Lute STEM and the noise program at Lehman, we were doing work with AI and a lot of it began with generative art. And I was using a lot of that art to, um, create my own authentic poems. And then after my poem was done, I would put it back in and say like, now can you come out with another image that matches the poem that I created? And then I would revise based on like the new image. And then I would, it, just, it just kept me like a iterative process for me. And it was really great because um, that's actually my favorite thing to write poetry, but I don't do it often. And I love doing it off pictures and visuals. Um, so I, I felt like something really special because these pictures were one of a kind. Mm -hmm. So, but Alana and I have done a lot of stuff in the classroom with third graders. Um, mm -hmm. And she's really helped me to feel a lot more comfortable about using it with younger kids. Of course, our kids don't have um, access, but we've really used it to help develop their writing and um, around being specific and discreet, um, working on like um, placement of words just so that um, they can, We've and we've done it with like our generative art generation. So kids are developing the prompts, we're putting it in, and then well, they we- they can do it in Padlet and they could do it in- That's Kindle. right, they can do it. I always forget about that. They can mm -hmm. do it in Padlet. And also, yeah. and also, Alana is helping me get now comment approved in your district, so. Yeah, he just has to <laughs> find oh, wow. the yeah, so. So maybe there's a way to experiment with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but and and you and Alana are presenting at Educon. Yeah. Um, this this Friday weekend. Yeah. Friday? Yeah. Yeah. This weekend. Yeah. So and and are you going to be presenting some of what you just talked about there? Yeah. We're going to do the create debugging creativity and some it's something like that and I don't know exactly the title but uh, we did uh, the unit in her class with um, the image generation, but I think we can also add in the poetry unit you did too, Marina, because she took their poems and she popped. Okay. So there's so many image generators, but the better ones, the best ones are not compliant with student data privacy and security laws. So when we want like the best images, like we'll have them write prompts and stuff and they can use Padlet or Canva once that's up and running. Um, but if we want to use a really robust one, then we'll just copy and paste it for them. And then we had them analyze the picture. Um, and then they went back and revised their poems because they got some new ideas from the pictures that it generated. Um, so that was pretty interesting. I want to give a little room to Aditya who fixed his camera and didn't get to say hello. Do you want to say hello? Hello. 
So uh, I I am part of the so here's how I've been using AI. So uh, a lot of my classmates have been using it in their writing, but I thought uh, in addition to doing that, I kind of came up with another idea, which is I'm on the school's debate team and. Uh, well, last time uh, we were at a tournament and uh, things did not go too well. So I realized that one reason that we did not do so well in the last debate compared to our other times we debated is that we did not have as many, as many statistics, as much evidence. And I realized that if we were able to somehow create our points that we were present at debates, uh, and kind of shorten that process that we have more time to find evidence to find statistics to back up our arguments and i thought hmm this would be perfect and uh i went on to not comment and i created a thinking partner that's only per that's purpose is to create like logic-based arguments uh so for example um one of our topics is, uh, that we are pre preparing for is that uh texting does more harm than good and we're kind of going to argue that and one of the points that ai created was that um, texting uh, while driving is a major cause of death and accidents. And then what I did is I took that point and then I went online and I figured out like the exact amount of deaths and then I can, that were caused by texting while driving and then I can present that. And actually the debate is actually this Saturday. So uh, I'm excited to see how my new debate strategy uh, create, have AI create points and then find evidence to support said points. I, I'm excited to see how it turns out. And you can also use it to, come up with like counterpoints you could have yeah. it like i think you have the idea that what someone else have oh, you done that? Yeah. Yeah, that is another thing that i have been testing i did like test it out a little bit yesterday uh but i haven't but i'm kind of focused on creating my main points and then maybe tomorrow day after uh, as i my points are a little more solid then i can um uh try out uh some of that stuff you know practice with that yeah, because it could help you like think like know what the other group is gonna say back to you and like try to yeah. push you on. I don't know the proper terminology. I should because my cousin is a very big debater. He just won some big competition. He's going to college next year. So I should know the terminology and I don't, so I'm sorry. Can I ask a hard question that comes to mind? Um, which is with especially since we have ninth graders who had Miss Dodronsky last year who described a place where you're not encouraged or taught or, you know, to use AI in a creative way, even though you found ways to use it. And then what Aditya just explained and the, the sort of possibilities. And then, and, but then we also have colleagues here who are working, you know, Marina and Alana. So what I want to try to figure out is how can we, you know, open this up so that other colleagues join us in, in some way? I told you it was a hard question. I don't have any answer to that. Is that a fair question? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's part of like having these conversations, but then expanding them and even um, inviting uh, the invitations that we make to to our colleagues who are, who are like fearful or just hesitant or think it's, um, you know, going to like, create problems like just the, the invitation and then like having them see you know young folks like these folks here and my students that are doing like amazing stuff asking like hard questions um you know enhancing their work like and it, again that's why when i'm when i'm sharing my work i'm always trying to take students with me and so like at educon i'm taking the students and they're going to like make the case like, let the students really make the case. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I agree. Like, oh, and Alana, I've already, I was already signed up for. I looked at the uh, <laughs> agenda. Sorry. I was already signed up for your session. Oh, cool. Yeah, I feel like. Who was starting there? Somebody was. That? Was it? Yeah, I was. I was yeah, in the ahead. ad. Yeah. I agree because I think that right now a lot of these teachers, and it's also not even always just the teachers. It's usually like the higher ups. And they're kind of like fearful of AI because they, they think that it's going to cause a lot of like plagiarism and cheating. But like if they actually have the chance to try it out and play around with it and realize like what a positive impact it can make on education, I feel like they would be a lot more comfortable with uh, allowing it more into the curriculum. So I feel like it's up to us to like kind of get more, uh, more people um, aware of like the positives of AI and how it can help us instead of 
like what they think it really was. Yeah, and just to like add on to what Amiya said, like she was spot on with what she said. But I was thinking that most of my teachers that have those deep rooted fears and beliefs that AI is like the root of all evil and that every student has like the <laughs> desire to use it to cheat. I think that there need to be more teachers like Miss Debronsky who let their students experiment with it. Because I know that last year when like we came out with our magazine that we like specifically specified that we used AI to help us with. I know a lot of my teachers, they knew that I was Miss Debronsky's student. They were really curious about it. And I know that they even asked me about it and they picked it up. So I feel like if teachers like Miss Debronsky, if we're students who are like devoted to the cause, if they're able to show results for how AI has like changed lives for the better and has changed revolutionized education, I feel like more teachers would be open to it. I feel like they wouldn't try it, but if people who were open to trying it showed the results, then these deep rooted fears could be, I think it'd be a step. I complete, I love what you said. I completely agree with you. And I love hearing it from like a student's perspective being on the other side, like I'm a school administrator, so I am I was a teacher and now I'm not. It's really hard to make teachers change the way they teach. A lot of them, a lot of them, like I went back to, I think, Jill, before you hopped on the call, I think I was talking to them about process over product. Teachers are so, they're assessing the end product. Like, you do the essay, I grade it. And now this whole AI thing shook everything up because in a world where AI can produce the end product in 10 seconds, the teacher can't assess just the end product anymore. And the teachers that are focusing on the learning process and guiding students through the learning process, whether it be in an essay, checking in on the writing, giving deep feedback, helping them really push their thinking, push their writing, and really watching them grow. Like, an, an A student's going to get an A on an essay. They're going to continue getting A's, but like maybe they're not growing. They're just a really good essay writer. But a teacher that's pushing their thinking and checking in on them and giving them feedback and and helping helping them like metacognitively use the AI to help them think about their own feedback and write a reflection. How did the AI help you? How did you grow? Like those types of things is focusing on that learning process. The teachers that are teaching like that I think are super comfortable with AI. They're not worried about it. Teachers that are doing like design thinking, project-based learning, uh, flipped classroom, they're not so worried about it. It's the teachers that are those traditional, like sit in rows, look at the front of the room. I'm going to lecture at you. You're going to write an essay and turn it in. It's a whole shift in what they've done their whole careers. And it's really hard to get them to change everything about their job. So that's what I think is happening, but I don't know how, how, what should we do to tell those teachers to change? Like, how do we make them change? What do you guys think? Like what, as a student, what advice would you, cause you're the future. And I think at the core, our job as an educator is to prepare students to be successful in the real world. And the reality is in your real world, when you graduate, you will use it because if you don't, you're going to be less efficient and you're going to get half as much work done as someone else who uses it so you will use it and we need to help you use it the right way so how do we get teachers to change what do you think exactly like it's a tool that we have to know how to use once we go out of school but yeah so i think that teachers right now have to like realize that we need to learn how to use that as a tool and kind of modify their curriculum like it's definitely difficult but right now teachers who are so like traditional like you were saying their, their lectures and prompts are so direct and they don't force us as students to think. So it's easy for stuff like chat GPT to just write it out for us. But teachers that kind of have a more personalized, like more of a deep thinking type of topic that we would have to write about have more success with AI. So I think more than just like teachers individually, like the curriculum change has to be forced or like brought upon them. They have to like realize that changing the curriculum to make it more individualized and more like focused on the type of thinking that students would have to do would help because right now a lot of these traditional teachers are not doing that. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Aditya, I saw you raise your hand physically. You, um, you don't have to. Just jump in. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a few uh, ideas, comments. So I, you're saying how uh, AI makes workers more efficient, and I'm so actually last year, in as part of the debate team, we did have to debate that as one of our topics, and I did find wow. some really interesting statistics on how it makes white collar workers uh, more efficient in their work. And I was also thinking about what you said, pr uh, process over product. And I was, I'm, I'm on the school's like engineering team. We do like, we go to like an engineering competition at, in April. It was you go to class too, by the way? Just, yeah. No, no, go ahead. Sorry, I just, it's just a joke. Keep going. You're on the engineering team. Uh, so yeah, um, and in the engineering team, what we do is it's very, uh, I think, I feel like it's, uh, while they do look at our product, like for example, if you're making an, ele a, a, an electric car, like a solar car, they're obviously gonna look at the solar car, how it performs. But they're also, you also have to create logs. You also have to show when you, uh, what you did and then uh, why you did it. You kind of explore your thinking process, what inspired you. And I feel like uh, if schools were more like that, uh, I think uh, then AI would not be as big of a concern. Right. I used to say like, if a question's Googleable, it's not a good question. But now with AI, it's like, if the assignment is like AIable, it's just maybe not a good assignment, right? I think that's really something, it, I think AI is making us look at our very traditional 50s, 1950s based curriculum and finally saying like, we're never, all the research said we were never supposed to teach the book or the piece, we were supposed to teach the reader and the writer and the human. And so it's really professional development that teachers need. And, you know, there are people that are traditional and they've been and, and maybe maybe we'll have to wait till some of those phase out because they're resistant. I also think there's something that, you know, my students are going to know this that I struggle with. When you start to teach the reader and you start to teach the writer, I have a very difficult time and I'm asking those kids to be on a growth. I hate putting a grade on them. And my couple kids, Aditya and Rohan, knows again this year, uh, Ashna and Amia, you don't know, I really just got called up by the union again about not doing grades and giving everybody 100. And I said, you know, I think other teachers could be in this pro problem because they want to grade the product. How do you grade the process? Amia and Aditya and Rohan and Ashna are all going to walk into my class at different levels. What do I do? Start out some with a C? And then what if you only grow a little bit? And then it, I just, I think those are part of the issues that we have to deal with for a teacher. Yeah. You know, how do, how do we, we do have to teach the reader. We have to teach the writer. We have to allow for growth and failure. And if we're going to assess humans, which I hate that we do, but if we're going to, we're going to have to find a way that doesn't, you know, that actually allows them to learn. You, we're going to discover cures to things by accident. So Where's the accident happening that we allow in their reading and their Joe, writing? Joe, I just, I just want to, uh, you, you do do, and and AI thinking partners have supported you to do formative assessment, and that you give kids lots of feedback, and they get feedback all over the place from their peers, from AI, right, from right. So, is there a way to kind of harden that formative feedback? By harden, I mean make it more obvious so that I don't know. I mean, listen, I, I've suggested to them, I, I want to just put words. I really don't like to put a number on a human. And the last thing I want to do is put a number on a human that closes at marking period one November. And now you could grow immensely, but I'm sorry, you know, marking period one, you really, your skills were out of day. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's my biggest struggle in life. The kids know, <laughs> Aditya and Rohan, I literally cried about it last week <laughs> in class because the district came down so hard on me. I call it the game of education. Like, I hate it. I really, it bothers me so much. Like, my brother, he was not an A student. I was. And now if you look at us now as adults, arguably, like, let's rewind if I didn't have a book a couple months ago. You would say my brother's more successful than me. If you looked at us today, before I had a book, maybe, because maybe people might define that as success. He owns his own business. He's married. He has a family. He bought a beautiful house. He put in a beautiful pool. Like by definition of success, like what is success? What does success mean? Like it's very subjective, right? Like I, and I feel like 
in school where like we only reward kids that get like the A. My brother didn't get A's. He got like D's, but he turned out fine. Right. Rohan, I wanted to uh, call you out there. Have you been thinking anything you want to add in here? Um, We're not. Uh, not really, but like I, from a student's perspective, I do know that like a lot of students like like a, devote a lot of their like uh, time to like like thinking about their grades and stuff. So like, so like, Rohan, I, in 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 the um in the example, sorry to interrupt your thought there. If I did, I but in the example that we went through a couple of weeks ago with your work, yeah. by the time you got to your fifth and sixth um, revision, you actually used AI to give yourself a grade, very similar to what the ninth graders here did. Um, and then you made some changes and you checked it again. You got another grade. So how is getting a grade like from AI different than getting it from a teacher? So that's um, a big question, but yeah. I mean, if you're getting like, I think from, from, from AI, you get feedback. Like it's, it's giving me like feed, like. But it also gave you a grade. You you had it yeah. give you a percentage. But go ahead, yeah. Yeah. So like the AI is giving me feedback on like how I can improve. Like, like it it gave me a number, but it and it, it told me like why I think. Mm -hmm. Well, like um like uh, if a teacher did that, it would be different since it's like final. But like with AI, you can always make edits and regrade it. Yo, I think there's something there. <laughs> Can you argue to your district that you'll give I, grades as long as they're not final? I mean, that's, that's interesting. I said open yeah. up all the marking periods. Open uh -huh. up all the marking periods. They brought in Steve Wormley to do a presentation to us three or four years ago. And he gave one great example of the bicycle riding. My kids know this. Marking period one, you can't ride. You haven't achieved the skill. You fail. Marking period two can't ride the bike, you fail. Mark in period three, you got training wheels. You really haven't achieved the skill. Mark in period four, you're riding, you're doing jumps. But the average of the four marking periods says that you would get a C minus or a D. And, you know, I literally went in with that to them and they just, you know, some districts are opening everything up, right? Some districts are just going to like words at the end. So you know, in the end, Rohan said it, right? What What do we need? We need feedback to grow. What do we get in business? Feedback to grow. Yeah, I, I think we should like. I think more more of our grade should be like an effort. Hmm. What do you mean? Say more. Like, like if if you choose like almost any class, like mo most of your grade is just based on like how well you do on this on one test or another test. But like, it should really. But like. Basically, like, not a lot of classes have grades based on your effort. Mr. Ronsi's class being the exception here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you go ahead, Rohan. Like, if you put every single effort in, but you're, but you're not the star student, like, you could still get, like, a C, even though you're doing the best you can. That was like my brother, but I'll tell you what, he turned out great. I, I genuinely believe that generative... Um, AI is some of the answer to this because because of the kinds of immediate and feedback and um, detailed recommendations for what to do next that we can yeah. teach teach it to give kids like I think I think there is a place for that um, and yeah and I don't know how that fits in the whole scheme of how you know how report cards go out to parents and all that, but I do think there's something here that worth worth picking at a little longer. I think so, that one thing that AI doesn't solve is the grading aspect of it because whether there's AI or not, it's going to take a lot more effort to get schools to open up to like the completely different grading system like Mr. Dronsky is struggling with. So I think that what might be like a good idea or what might be a good idea is to try to figure out like what what we can do to fix the grading issue because what i like i don't think chat gpt and ai will fix grading because like yeah you can use ai to like 
keep modifying and making your work better and better, but how does teachers like give you a type of like grade on that? Because if they're not allowed to give any grades and there's like no way to measure anything and like kind of the whole system of like our entire society kind of relies on that because once you get a like whatever grades you get in high school that's how you get into college whatever grades you get into college that's how you get into further education or that's how you like get a job like in most cases of course there's you could start a business you could get successful on your own like self-made but in a lot of cases success is based off of grades and then like later on in life you're able to succeed based off of other aspects like like um, your the story that um, you were saying about your brother, so I feel like there has to be some other way to to like measure, I guess, like who wants to do what because like right now grades are measuring like who's better or worse, but I don't think it should be better or worse. It should be like a type of way to measure like who really has the interest in like one specific area versus another specific area, so that like they can take the path that they should to get where they want to be, where their definition of success is. Please yeah. jump in folks, but I, I do see Rohan figured out how to raise his hand. So go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you, Ashna, yeah. go ahead. Okay, uh, go I ahead. wanted to say that, um, adding up to what Mr. Edronsky said about like making a grade book, like just like a comment. I think that's actually possible because we had something like that in elementary school. We didn't, the teacher didn't give us a letter grade. like. I remember on the report cards, um, they just like plus check, check plus or like minus yeah. check. check. I, I, and then they were like a description of like how we were doing. Yeah, they yeah. did that how, in elementary. How how'd that go? Was that okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, in elementary school, I didn't even know what what like an A was, so there's not much to compare to. So was that better for you that you didn't know what that you think that was better? Um, yeah, yeah, I think that was better because, yeah. Or do you think that the letter makes you, like, try harder to, like, get the A? Or do you think that if it's just check, you're maybe not, you might not go back to fix your work to get the better grade? Or do you think maybe the A, you know you need to try a little bit extra hard? I, I think this is better because um because like in like a traditional system like you always have this grade book which says like what you have at that time and then like you're checking it every few hours because you're like worrying or something and oh but over here you're just like it's not like uh you just like check at the end of the end like not every day you're checking every ninety days or something to see what it is. I did a lot of research into intrinsic motivation, and so uh, that's been my past 10 years of research. So and, uh, you know, grades are an external motivator. Human beings, even though we think people think they do work for money, they, they actually work to the people that work the hardest that build these crazy companies are not usually money hungry. They usually are doing something. Um, yeah, there may be a few people out for power, but most most people are driven by their desires to create. And hey, I, let's you check know, in. Go ahead. Oh. I want to check in with the teacherpreneur about that too. When so I yeah. I just graduated with my degree, I know Marina's in her degree right now. So I went back to college for my third time. For so for those students, I literally just graduated my third time, and I told myself like I'm not going to care about the grades this time. I'm going to just focus on the learning. And I have all these other great things going on in my life that I think are worth maybe more energy. And if I don't get an A, I'm going to be okay with that. But for some reason, I just couldn't let go of it. Like everything I do is obviously intrinsically motivating because I don't like make money off of my podcast. I didn't write the books for like any other reason. I just want to like help people. That's why I do it. It's intrinsically to help other educators. Um, but I just couldn't not get an A. And for some reason, <laughs> I just couldn't, I told myself not to care about it but I still couldn't take my own advice. I, and I cared so much about the A, even though yeah, I, you've been brainwashed for a long time, Alana, that takes a long time to undo. I know. Also because Sam, Sam do you have, sorry, I just want to check Sam. You, you've done a lot of thinking around this kind of thing. Like 
your your side hustle stuff is about social good, yes, but people yeah. still make money. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. <laughs> you have some and, wisdom about some of that. No, <laughs> and, um, no, I, I I like you ended up doing the like the third degree, but I did get to the point where I really didn't care about the grade. And not but that didn't mean I didn't push myself. I mean, I cared about completing number like cuz that's the I mean, and that's the thing that we're trying to do at the U school where I teach is about completing. It's about starting something and finishing something. And it's something I try to instill, like even in, in my own in my own kids and with the young folks uh, that I teach. But I also I also inculcate that, like, it's OK if you fail. Because there's the learning in the failure. And I like I literally like, in yeah. learning. That's what I say it stands for. I Fail. literally, yeah, I literally like, uh, you know, went bankrupt, ran a business and went bankrupt. And that's how it became not. And that's kind of how like led me to education. Yeah. And I, you know, when kids do epic failures in my classroom, I'm like celebrating them, cheering yeah. them on. And they think I'm crazy, but I'm like, seriously, like, yo, that was an epic fail, man. Like, yo, that was <laughs> dope. Really, really cool. Like, yeah. you really sucked, but that was good. Yeah. And like. We, we, we do exhibitions and part of our exhibitions is like just students reflecting on their learning. Yeah. And like even acknowledge like, you know what? Anyway, I can't curse because they're young people there, <laughs> but like, yeah, my learning was, was, was trash, was garbage this, this quarter because I really didn't apply myself, but you know what? I'm going, hopefully by reflecting, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to do different. But in the real world, that's what happens. And like, I, I'm literally in Manhattan right now, surrounded by all these entrepreneurs and their first companies failed and they failed and they still went for it again. And then they learned and grew and now they're successful and maybe it took them three tries or four or whatever, but you don't necessarily, you're not successful on your first time. It's the learning that happens when you fail that makes you successful. So yeah, that's, that's what we, that's what I think we need to try to inculcate. And, um, I love that. So no, I, 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 I was going to say this earlier and then we went somewhere else, but I just want to say I, I, I've been flipping back through trying to find assessment in your book. Oh, yeah. And I think it is. <laughs> return to the book for a second. Um, but I think I, I would love to see a chapter <laughs> or a blog post, whatever, yeah. on like what kind of assessment systems do we need because of generative, we're in the generative age. Reversing the question from like, can we use AI and still grade to just like, you know what, what do we need? And because we have AI now, right. Um, I think we're somewhat there, but so, I think that would be worth putting out there. I could definitely work on that. <laughs> cool. So I'm, I'm wondering, Alana, do you guys have like um, other assessments around like um, next generation standards and all these other buzz terms that are like. I'll let Marina answer these questions. She's the teacher in the classroom. <laughs> Marina. Do you give your well, third graders grades? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. We are well, report cards. We're Marina was up till 11 o'clock at night doing report cards. Okay. What the the narrative part? So I get like about I get about three hundred characters to squeeze in to tell about an amazing person and all the things that they're doing. So that's that's the hard part. Are you using um, PT to help you with that? I actually no, actually I didn't. So Alana and Paul both know that I also have like some firm boundaries on things I like. Don't always, you know, I won't touch with. That's that. another question I love to ask. What should you not use AI for? Yeah. Yeah, just like my my personal writing. Like I use like the the art prompts to get me going, but like all of the writing and the words were my own and just some other writing that I'm doing is my own. But um I did so no, I didn't use that, but in kind of going back to what um Rohan was saying, as an elementary teacher, yeah, we have like a one, two, three, four system, which is about um, you know. Yeah approaching standards, meeting standards, exceeding standards, and, um, you know, performing below standards. And I, I did come from teaching middle school, and I really struggled, Jill, with the stuff that you were talking about. Um, because at that point, I was giving numerical grades. And um, I think having heard a lot of what you're saying, I had very similar, I have very similar philosophies. Um, so we've been here before. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, alternative assessment is, you know, been with us for a long mm -hmm. time, right? 
but but maybe generative AI gives us another push to to get beyond it again, beyond the traditional assessment. But I'm not sure, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking that some people might have been sitting on their last thoughts and I want to kind of go around and see if anybody has any, anything else to say. Janelle, you've been really quiet down there. Anything you want to, I'm, I'm calling on you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm just so I'm soaking it all in y'all. And the only thing that I might um, invite Jill to consider is the concept of ungrading and see if that kind of meets your meets in the middle between what the system is expecting of you and what you're hoping to uh, do with your kiddos. Thanks. That's a specific um area of inquiry or what is ungrading? Just say a little more. I, I never got to do ungrading in my own classroom. It, it's something that I learned about recently and I'm out of the classroom now. So I just, am, it, it sparked like joy in me. And I was like, wow, that would have, I would have totally done this if, you know, back in my, you know, high school ELA um, days. So it's just something, something I was thinking about and we can all Google that later and, and figure out, figure out what uh, ungrading is for another time. No, thank you. Thank you. Any, Let's just quickly, uh, if you haven't said anything here at the end, jump in again, what you're thinking. Oh, and by the way, Marina is going to lead this conversation next week. I'm not sure Alana will be able to join us. I hope so. Well, I think, let me check if I can come. Uh, yeah, I can I can join next week. So we're just going to continue this next week. Um, so just so thank you. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, why don't I call on people so it's more clear? I mean, uh, yeah. Amaya, sorry. Am I saying your name wrong? Amia, yeah. Amia, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Any thoughts uh, you have here? Not, not, but. Yeah, I think just in general, I think our main goal should be to figure out how to get teachers and kind of like the curriculum to adapt to a different grading system that would also like allow the use of AI and use AI to help students. Because I think the major thing is that once we leave school, we can use AI for anything. And so what's the point of school for not learning how to do things when we get older? Because like school is supposed to teach you what you need for once you're older and exactly what you want to do. School teaches you so much, but you choose what you want from that for your life later. So it should teach us with all the tools that we're going to have access to later, because we're not going to be restricting ourselves from using ChatGPT like our school does because everybody else is using it. And it's not just a matter of, oh, everyone else is using it, so I'm using it too. It's just like to keep up with society, to keep up with technologies, it helps you and it helps society if you use the tools, all the tools that you have access to. And just think about those students that don't have their own cell phone, don't have their own laptop. I mean, they might have money. Their family can't purchase one for them. So they're like at a larger like digital divide. So even the students that are using it secretly on their own devices, they're sort of catching up. But imagine those kids that don't have their own device and they can't use it at all. They're falling so far behind. Exactly. Yeah, because like and people like us, we're, we're testing it out. We're trying it yeah. out for fun on the side when it's not like all risk risky for school school stuff but people who don't have devices at home they can't even do that so yeah. allowing it in school and teaching at school the reason they're going to school is because they can't learn at even by themselves at home so right. they should be taught those type of things at school because they're going to need it when when they get out of school 100 percent. and i, I want to add in what what sam said earlier about students who struggle with reading and writing also struggle with ai and and right so the, the describe there alana have that struggle so they're not even if they have a phone they're not going to like go to ai to figure stuff out probably because it's a struggle there too is that fair mm. a fair thing to say sam i'm just and then your last comment so. yeah that's Are you there? That, yeah yeah no um that's that's the the thing i'm i'm seeing like and i i'm i'm working with i even have i've started like my own ai student crew i don't know i haven't come up with the right name but it's it's their kids but i'm i'm bringing like a variety of kids where we're playing around and i, I want the kids that are struggling to uh, be a part of like like when you're doing research and you don't have those kids in the in the mix you're missing out like if we're just getting the high performing kids 
they're going to do well either any either way right and so i think we yeah just it's, it's something joe and i have talked about like i love i love the th students who show up here tonight but i wonder about the others who aren't you know into this right so yeah so part of the thing is we have to invite them as well to like mm -hmm. you know opportunities uh to engage and it, it like like i had a kid like create like we we were we did some empathy poems and we played with ai to come up with like the perspective of the poems that they were going to create and then like then the iterations of the poems um and it was it was cool like letting the kid bring bring his imagination and like write a poem from the i don't know if he did it from the perspective of the moon or something but it was it was it was cool and he he felt empowered and um, you know, he probably wouldn't have done that if I didn't invite him in to, you know, the, that opportunity. I'm looking at the clock, if you need to jump, we totally understand. Um, Aditya, thoughts here? Did, did, you've been sitting there. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about like, I think someone mentioned what's your limits with AI. My limits are generally, if the teacher is not okay with it, I generally don't use AI. I, mean, I don't use AI. Um, Very that's very mature of you to follow the rules. Um, yeah, I think I definitely know people who, uh, well, they don't exactly follow that. <laughs> um, but that's just my general stance on it. And occasionally, like, I'll ask permission to use it. Like, with the debate thing, I asked my debate coach if I could use it, and he was totally on board with it. Um, uh, that's just my general stance on it. I also find this, almost, this technology basically was very limited or non-existent like maybe like a sh such a short time ago uh it's been developing at such a rapid phase in such a rapid pace mm -hmm. oh, cool. Thank the you. only thing Thank we didn't you. talk about that like i would love to continue on is like how okay. we rolled it out with our students is i led with the bias and misinformation so now when they use it, they're hypercritical of what comes out of it. And I feel like we didn't touch on that. And my next podcast interview is with Ken Shelton on bias and misinformation. I'm so excited about that. And I love, that's like my favorite topic to talk about when I talk about AI. And maybe if you have to give an essay, Jill, that's a good topic to give. It's very controversial or a debate for you. Yeah. One of the things I, uh, I start my class out with is really talking about not even, um, I, I, I don't even want to teach about credible sources or anything. What I always talk about, you are, you are the person that's credible. Yeah. So yeah. you have to think about where you got your knowledge from and yeah. you have to become self-aware of your own biases. And when you, everything in the class is about that, building your credibility I and becoming you. aware of yourself, um, your own bias makes you aware of others. I'll just leave off with my, my last thought. I, I really am into it like a 21st century portfolio of products that are authentic that are real world, that are things that you'll really use in the in business. And I think that will help force teachers, hopefully a little bit to get to AI. But I think the students are the key. I think the kids give the presentations. I think the kids do the PD. And that would swing teachers if they, some of the teachers to say, wow, okay. I mean, I, you know, it, it is hard to get a whole class, but I'd love to get my whole class on to really just come and run a professional development for teachers. Yep, Chabaqua okay. did that. I can connect you with them if you want. The cool. Truth Squad, that's what they're called. Oh, love that. These students here could lead it. Yeah. Yeah, that could. Yeah. All right. Anybody else want to jump in? There is more yeah. to get to. I get to all that. Um, so um, Rohan has his hand up, though. You, you get password, Rohan. You raised your hand. Yeah. Um. I wanted I wanted to connect the thing that you guys were saying that uh like like a lot of teachers are afraid that like people use AI for che for cheating, and also mm -hmm. connecting to that like to our traditional grading system where like only, kids would only use AI for cheating for cheating because because off uh because they're like scared of their grades so they because of our traditional grading system. Wow, that's a really profound you made there. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I, think, I mean, I agree, but not necessarily because some kids might be using it because they don't care about the assignment. They just want to get it over with quickly. It may not be only because they want to get the best grade, but that's definitely a part of it. 
Yeah. Um, just like some of my final thoughts. Earlier, I wanted to like say something about um what was said about the grades and how like they affect students. I feel mm -hmm. like especially this year, I'm seeing like I'm truly seeing the impacts of like how like the um impacts of progressing, like growing as a writer or like in any subject, how it really affects students, especially since like now I'm in high school and we're right now we're scheduling for our next year. And it's just grade requirements after grade requirements. And I know so many students, so many, like so many of my friends that are so capable of taking these higher level classes, like APs and more honors and stuff. And they just don't, didn't make the grade requirement because during our first like our first quarter, they may have like fell off a little because we just got here, but they have really shaped up. And still, some of them don't think that they're going to make it. So I know that like changing education as a whole and like effort based classes, it's it'll hopefully it'll happen, but it'll take a really long time because more than just like the system, it's also like a societal construct as well, of how student success is associated with their like numeric values with grades. It's a terrible system. But I think that something that we can look at in the near future, I'd want something to change, something that I'd want to change is maybe removing the grade requirements for certain courses and just having like people being able to take whatever course they want because I feel like some students are really being limited in that way. Mm. Yeah. We'd have to agree also there. profound connections. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Marina and Alana are going to continue this next week. <laughs> uh, we're meeting here again at Wednesday. Alana, you have another podcast. <laughs> just just <laughs> playing. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure you're busy and I really that you're going to take some time out to meet with us again um, next yeah. week, next Wednesday. So thank you all. Um, and uh, get up on his book and listen to our podcasts. Um, reconnect. <laughs> thank you all. Good night. Uh, so the debate is this weekend, Mr. Alice. Oh, well, we, we'll hear about it next week. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely make sure to add in like all this. Um, I, when I get back, I'll look, put in like how I did on now comment, like which debates I won, which debates I lost. And I'll put that all in a now comment and then we can talk about it next time. Bye. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Bye. 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 And you ninth nice graders, please come back. It's, it was really nice to see you again. <laughs> Been a while. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.